Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Adding the Read Use Case to our MVC Database Example. In this video, we'll review the design diagrams for the Read Use Case. We'll also create the Read Use Case components in our Eclipse project. Here we see a site map with some wireframes depicting how our database example will look to the user. We see a main page showing the data including title, author, and pages from the database table books. On each row they'll also include an update and delete link. In addition there'll be an add entry link or button on the page. When add entry is selected We'll present an entry form for the user. They'll type in their information, click Add Entry, and then it will return to the main page, but the new record will be inserted into the table. If the user clicks Update, we'll see a similar page, but the update entry will include the current data from the record that was selected. The user can then edit these items, hit Update Entry, and then we should go back to the main page with the values updated in the table. Finally, if the user clicks on the delete button or link, they will be brought back to the main page, except for the table will now not include the row that they selected delete from. Well, how are we going to accomplish that? In our application, we have four main use cases. The first use case is read data. A request comes in to read the database. We're going to use a separate Java class that will query the database to read the data. It will use the book class as necessary. Once the query has been implemented, results will be passed back to the servlet, which will then pass execution on to a JSP to create the view. The JSP will send in response the page that we see here with the table showing the data from the database. Here we see that we're going to need one, two, three, four components to be built to handle this use case. The book class, as we'll see, will be reused, so once we create that once, we will not need to create it again for other use cases. However, the other components will be unique to this one use case. Here's the IPO table for our read query class. Notice that both the source and the destination of read query is the read servlet, so it's basically a helper class for the read servlet controller. Read servlet will pass the database name, the database username, and the database password into read query. Read query will create a connection, create a prepared statement to hold the query, set up the prepared statement with the query, send the query to the database, and finally, after receiving the results from the database, we'll process these results to make an HTML table, which it will then pass back to the destination read servlet. So here we are in Eclipse, ready to create our read query class. Note that we already have a few items already in our Eclipse project. Under source folder we have the controllers package and the model package. Within the model we see the book class is already created. Under web content we see that we have created index.jsp. Note also that we have the MySQL connector J driver already included under the lib folder down a couple folder levels in the web content. At this moment we're going to create our read query. This will be a class of the model. We're going to have a number of these classes that we'll use to connect to the database. So let's create another package called DB Helpers. Right click on source, select new package, type DB Helpers, and finish. We see that located in our Project Explorer window. Now right click on DB Helpers. Select Class, note the source folder and the package. For the name, let's call this Read Query. Let's leave the modifiers as public. We'll leave the super class as object with no interfaces. Let's leave the method stubs checked as they are. But let's generate comments and click Finish. In the Project Explorer window, we now see that readquery.java has been added under the DB Helpers package. Let's expand the editor. Recall this helper is going to make the connection to our database 
and then allow us to do a read query on the database to simply get all the books in our books table. Let's start by adding a couple of fields that we're going to need. There are several steps that are fairly general in connecting and performing a use case on a database. I like to separate these into several methods, including the constructor within my query helpers. Because we're separating in, into separate methods, we need to have a few fields that can be used by all these methods. Let's start by declaring these fields. Let's type private, connection, connection. We see there's an error cannot be resolved to a type. Let's pick import connection java.sql. We're also going to need a result set object. And we'll call this one results. Result set also needs to be imported. We'll get that from the java.sql package as well. Next, let's create a constructor, but this time we're not going to use any of the fields for the constructor but we're going to get the information that will allow this helper to connect to our database. Public read query. We're going to provide three things as parameters for our read query. First, we'll provide a string that has the database name. Let's call that DB name. We also need to take in a string, so let's call that you name. Finally, we need a string for our database password, and let's call that PWD. So when this constructor is called, the calling class will hand over a DB name, a username, and a PWD, and we'll use that within this constructor to create a connection to the database. The next line, I'm going to create a string variable called URL. I want to set in this URL the full connection information to get to the database. This will follow a particular pattern that will end by adding the DB name to the string. URL should first specify the technology on the application side, JDBC. Then it will specify the technology on the database side, MySQL. And then we need to add the URL information to the database server. In our case, this will be localhost at port 3306. At the end, we need to have a slash so that we can then separate that and then concatenate the name of the database. Note some things here. If you were to use a different database technology, you'd change MySQL to that new database technology. If you were using a different application technology than Java, you might change JDBC to match that one. Finally, if you had a different port or a different online location for your database to be stored in your database server, you adjust the URL portion accordingly. Next, we need to set up the driver. To do this, we're going to call a particular method of the class object called forName, and we're going to provide it a string. The string that we're going to provide is very specific for our particular driver. It starts with com.mysql.jdbc.driver. Click dot n, and then we're going to make a new instance. So what this does, it makes a new instance of our driver object. Notice we have an error. What we need to do here is add a try catch. So we're going to surround this with a try catch. Note what has happened. We got the try around our class.forname new instance and three catches. If it cannot instantiate this object, we'll get an instantiation exception. If we can't access it, we'll get illegal access exception. Or if it cannot find the class, we'll get a class not found exception. For now, we'll leave the only thing that will happen if we get one of these exceptions to be a print stack trace so we can debug the errors. The next thing we want to do is to use this driver to establish the connection. So we're going to use this.connection 
to set our field. Then we're going to call something called the driver manager. We're going to use get connection. And let's use the one that takes all three parameters. And we'll pass it our URL, our uname, and our PWD. This line will use the driver manager to create that connection object. Notice it also has an error. The get connection method of the driver manager obviously could throw an exception, so we need to catch it. Let's add a catch clause to the surrounding try. We see that now we have a SQL exception added as one of the catch clauses. So at this point, if another class, say a servlet, wants to use the read query, it will call the read query constructor, hand it the database name, the username, and the password, and we'll make a connection to the database. We need two more methods for this class. We need something that will allow the query to be made, and then something else that will return the results as an HTML table. Let's call the first method do read. So put public. We'll return void. We'll simply set the results field of our object. Do read. In this case, we're not we're going to have a generic query that just looks at the entire table, so we do not need to pass it any information to add to the query to filter the data that's returned. Let's go ahead and set up a string that we'll call query. And for this one, we'll do a very simple one, select star from books. Probably one of the simplest SQL statements we can do, a select or read statement. Star means all fields from the table books that is in our database. For our database queries, we're going to use a particular JDBC object that will allow us to securely connect to the database with our SQL command. This is called a prepared statement. So in order to use that kind of object, we need to instantiate one. So let's type prepared statement, call it PS for short. Now rather than calling a constructor, let's call our connection object and we'll call prepare statement. And for the string, we'll add our query string as a parameter. Now we have an error on prepared statement. Looks like we first need to import. Be sure to get that from java.sql. So that has been fixed. Now we have another error. Looks like the prepare statement method must throw an uncaught exception. So let's surround this with a try catch. We'll leave the outcome, should an error occur, to be the stack trace. Now when using a prepared statement, we often want to inject other data into the query. We'll see that as we do our create, update, and delete components. For now though, our query is complete, so we just need to execute it. PS dot execute query. Note it's going to return a result set. Now we need to hold on to that result set. We have a nice field for that. So when the doRead method is called, a string query will be created with the SQL command select star from books. We'll use this to create a prepared statement object. Then we'll call the execute query method, which performs reads on a database, to get the results of our query and we'll store that in our field, which is a result set called results. For our final method, we need to write some code that will create an HTML table based on our query. Public string, because we're going to return a string, get HTML table. It does not take any inputs to the method. Note the error here, we must return a string, so let's cre create a string, call it table, and make sure to return it at the end. Of course, it's empty at the moment, so we're going to have to add some things to that. So the outcome of this table string should include all of the HTML to define a table where the rows come from the database. So let's start by adding the initial table tag. 
I'm going to use concatenation and add each thing a little by little. HTML table tag, let's put a border equal one on it. Of course, before it's done, I'm going to want to close the table tag. Now the rows of this table should simply list all of the books in the book table of the database. These are currently stored in my results set. So one thing I can do is to loop through this results set, take out each item itself and add it to the table. Let's use a while loop. I need to include a condition that as long as it's true will go into this loop. So let's use this.results.next. Before I explain this, let's handle the exception. Let's surround with the try catch. Now we see our while loop is inside of the results.next. A result sets come along with a pointer, sometimes known as a cursor, which points at the currently selected record of the result set. When a result set is first created, the pointer is above the first record. In order to get it to point to the first, if any, records, you need to move the pointer. So the dot next method will move the pointer. The other thing that the dot next method will do is return true if there is a record where the cursor has moved to. So if we move the pointer from our current location to the next location and there's a record there, we will go into and continue this loop. If we move the pointer and then there is no record, it will mean we've come to the end of our result set and we will complete the loop. Next, we need to use a book object to get the data from the current record in the result set. So let's declare one. Book, book equals new book. Now we have an error. We need to import from our model. Now we want to set the values. So let's set the book ID. Where is that going to come from? We also want to set the book title. Author. And pages. And what do we want to set them with? Well, obviously, we need to get them out of the result set from the current record. Turns out the result set has some other nice methods. For example, this.results.get int. Get int can take a column index as shown here, or it could take the name of the column. Let's go with the name of the column as a string, book ID. So if we read this, this statement from inside out, we're going to get the int that is stored at the current record of the result set from the field or column called book ID. That int will then be used to set the book ID field of our book object. We can do the same things with title. This time, though, we're going to get string because the title is a string. We can call it by the field name. This.results.get string again for author. And then finally, this.results.get int for pages. Now you not, might have noticed that I was putting in strings here when it actually called for column numbers. That's because I can use field names when I know them, or I can substitute in column numbers when I don't. So I could have all of these going get int 1, get string 2, get string 3, and get int 4 respectively. I'll undo that and use the field names. At this point, after pointing at the first record of the result set, I've grabbed the data from the result set and I've stored that in a book object. So now I want to add that as a row in my table. So let's do table plus equal. Need a new row.
In our table, we only want to include the items that aren't the book ID, so let's include the title, author, and pages in that order. Book dot get Copying and pasting won't hurt if I do it well. For the second one, I want book.getAuthor. And for the third one, I want book.getPages. Finally, we want to include in our table a couple of hyperlinks for deleting or updating the records. So let's include another cell. So let's have table plus equal a href equal, and I'll leave that blank for a moment. We'll say update. Finish that hyperlink. Put a space after that. And we'll have a second hyperlink where we'll see the word delete. Now the trick is we want to add a reference that will go to the right place and provide the right information to perform an update or delete for this current record. So we need a URL mapping for update. Why not call it update? When we create the servlet later, we'll make sure that one of the URL mappings for the update servlet is the word update. Now we want to send it a bit of information. Be a good idea to send it the book ID. Recall that that's the primary key for our current book that we're pointing at. So we need to concatenate that in here and that is currently stored in book.getBookID. Now for delete, we want to do the same thing. Let's send that to delete, and let's make sure that we also send the book ID. Book.getBookID. And I believe that does it. So to recap what this method does, when getHTMLTable is called, we'll start creating a string that will hold HTML and the content. The content will be derived from our result set. We'll add the appropriate HTML to the table, and then we'll start a loop where we're looping through all the records in our current result set. To do that, we'll use a while loop, and as long as results.next is true, we'll continue in the loop. Results.next moves the result set pointer to go to the next record in the result set. If there's one there, it returns true, and it remains pointing at it. If it's not one there, it's false, and the loop will end and we'll complete the table. Inside, we're pointing at a particular record, so let's create a book object to hold its values. Let's get the values from the record set using results.get methods. Note there are a bunch of these methods, and you want to use the one that is related to the data type that we're getting from the database record. So get int when it's an int, get string, perhaps get double, get date. Whatever data type you're retrieving from the database, you want to use the appropriate method. These methods, then, you can provide the name of the field, if you know it, or you can provide the column number starting with one. So if the first column in the result set is book ID, I could have replaced this with one. Next, after creating the book object, I use it to add a row to my table that shows the title, author, and get pages. Finally, I include a column in that row that includes two hyperlinks, one to update and one to delete. Each of these will be referencing a different URL mapping, update and delete, respectively. And we're going to send along with each one the book ID equals whatever number the book ID is. This completes our read query. We won't have a chance to test it until we complete the other two components. Here we have an IPO, or input process output table, for one of the components in our read use case, namely the read servlet. We can see that there are two sources. First, let's start with the source that is a request, either from index, add servlet, update servlet, or delete servlet. With this request, no input will be coming in to process. The read servlet will then create a read query object. It will use the read query object to get the table of books. When it does this, it will provide the read query with the output, the database name, the username for the database, and the password. 
Read query will use this and it will return as input back to our read servlet an HTML table complete with all the records from the database. Read servlet will then pass this table and control over to read.jsp. Now that we have the read query built, we need to build our servlet. Before we do so, let's take a quick look at index.jsp and notice that we're going to use read for our URL mapping. With that in mind, right-click on controllers, select new, servlet. Note the project is correct, the source folder, that it's in the controllers packet, and let's put the class name as read servlet. Check the superclass and the class name, both look OK. Select Next. Servlet deployment descriptor information, we note that the name is read servlet. For a description, let's put controller for reading the books table. We won't need any initialization parameters for this example, but often it's a good place to put things like the database name. For our URL mapping, we have read servlet automatically created, but we'd like to have simply lowercase read as a URL mapping. So this time let's add that so that developers have a choice between the two things. Select next. Note we'll keep the public modifier. No interfaces are required. For method stubs, we'll include the do post and the do get. And select finish. In the Project Explorer window, we see that Read Servlet has been added to the controllers package. In the editor, we now see our Read Servlet. Quick look at this, we see that it's imported the appropriate classes to run a servlet. We have our web servlet annotation, which has the description, and lists the URL pattern. So when we build this project, the server will know that a call to read servlet or a call to read, either one, will call this read servlet class. We see also that we have a do get and a do post method stubs already generated. We want to accept either a do get or do post in this example, but I only run a write code in one of those. So let's code do get just to simply pass execution on to the do post. Do post and then pass along the request and the response. So a get request to read will simply call the do post method. A do post method to read is where we're going to put the code that we want to do. Compared to read query, this one is going to be fairly simple. Mainly we're going to want to create a read query helper object. We're going to want to get the HTML table from the read query object. And finally, we're going to pass execution control Three simple things. To use read query, we need to call the read query constructor to instantiate an object. Type read query. I'm going to call this RQ for short. Equals new read query. Note we have an error so far because we need to import it from our DB helpers package. We still have an error because the only constructor that we have requires three strings. If you recall, these are the database name, the username, and the password as strings. My database is called SciF underscore library for my sci-fi library. My username for my MySQL installation is called root. And then my password, I believe, is simply an empty string. Very insecure database, only used for example purposes, shut off when I'm not using it. So at this point, I've created a read query helper object. If you recall, the constructor will establish the connection. I can now get the HTML table. This will require calling two methods of read query. I need to make sure that the query is executed by calling the do read method. And then the, the other method will return a string, which I'm going to put into table. 
and it's called the getHTMLTable method. Now to pass execution on to the control, I need to first make sure that this table will be sent along. So let's add that as a request attribute, request.set attribute. We'll call it table as the label, and we'll add the value as what's currently in the table variable. I also like to have a string for my URL. In this case, the URL will not change, but it will go back to slash read.jsp. In order to get execution down to the JSP file, we need a request dispatcher. I'll just call mine dispatcher equals request.get request dispatcher and we'll give it our URL as a parameter. Note we have an error. This is because request dispatcher is not automatically imported. Let's import it now. And then we'll call the forward method and at the request and the response objects to send execution down to the read.jsp. So at this point, our read servlet is complete. Here is our IPO table for our read.jsp. We come into read.jsp when the read servlet passes control to read.jsp. When it does this, it will also send along an HTML table. Read.jsp will get this table as input, then use it to create an HTML view that includes the table to send back to the client browser. Now we're ready to build the final component of our read use case, namely the read.jsp file. JSP files are stored in web content, so in the Project Explorer window, let's right click on web content, select new, and now select JSP file. Note that it's stored in the proper location. Recall that we are sending it to read.jsp. Select next. We'll keep the default JSP with HTML markup, and let's hit finish. In the Project Explorer, we see that read.jsp has been added directly into our web content project root folder. This will be a fairly simple page. We're going to need to get our table as a string. So let's do that first. String table comes off from of the request as an attribute called table. And note that because there's a type mismatch, attributes are objects, we need to cast this as a string. The next thing we need to do is to work with our output to the client. In other words, the view. Let's change the title to sci-fi library. Let's copy that and make that also the headline of the page. Then we want to simply output the table so that the user will see a list of the books in the database. Finally, just below the table, we'd like to include a link that will let somebody go to the add form to add a book to the database. Let's just make that a hyperlink, a href equal, let's call this the this URL add, and we'll say add a book. Of course, the outcome of this link will be a 404 error until we get around to adding the add use case to our project. So the read.jsp is complete. Now that we have completed our components for our read use case, we need to test our code. Right click on the project name and select build project. Some of you may have automatic build, in which case you'll not see this in the right click menu. One thing you want to make sure you've done before you start testing is that your MySQL server is running. Right click on the project name once again, select run as, 
run on server. Make sure that Tomcat is your preferred server. Click Next. Check to see if your project is the only project and select Finish. After a moment, the server will spin up and then your preferred browser will be displayed showing the first index page of our application. Before we test, we need to think about what will happen when we click the link. What should happen is that the request goes to our read servlet. The read servlet will use the read query class as necessary to create a table based on a query of our books table. This will be passed on to the read.jsp, which will send the view back to our browser. The browser will then display a table of listing all the books, along with title, author, and number of pages, and an update and delete link for each row. Let's see if that happens. Uh-oh, we see a 500 error. 500 errors mean that we have some type of error in our code. Note that this one is for a Java null pointer exception. Always be sure to read the error pages to get clues about what to fix. We can also see by looking at the stack trace that the error showed up after going to the doRead method, which was called from the doPost method. So we're going to start to debug this by looking at the doRead method in our read query. Here we are back in Eclipse, the doRead method. I don't see an obvious error there when I look at the code, so let's look for a few more clues. If we expand the console and look here, we can see that the first error that appears is a no suitable driver found. So the error is actually earlier. Why didn't we see it? Notice that that is in the read query constructor where the connection is made. So we need to look there to see what's going on. The reason it did not show up in your browser is because the exception actually occurred within this try catch block, so it was caught, and the only thing that was done is to print this stack trace to the console, which is where we saw the error. What could be in this code that could cause the driver not to be found? Depends on the URL, username, and password. DB name, username, and password were passed to the constructor OK. I see what the problem is. I notice when I look at the URL, I am missing a particular punctuation mark, namely the colon following my sequence. So let me fix that. So let's save and rebuild and run this again. Hopefully, when we click on the link this time, we will see a full table representing the books in our database. That is assuming there are no other errors in my code. So let's click again. Hmm, no error messages, but we are getting a logical error. Notice that our table is not filled out. We need to think a little bit more about what to fix here. Let's see, the table was created as a string. It was created in our read query helper object in the method get HTML table. So let's have a look there to see what's going on. Here we are back at the HTML table. Let's have a look through the code. When the method is called, I see that the string is created and we add the opening tags for the table. Then within a try catch, we create our book object we start adding values to the table and we call the title from the book. I think I see what's going on. Remember our table had the title blank. Can you tell what's missing? I'm sure you noticed that we're not actually adding the title to the table, even though we might be getting it okay from book. So we'll need to fix that in our code. You also see that we have the same problem for the author and the pages. So let's fix those and then run it again. Right click on project, run it again. Let's click the button. Et voila! We see a table based on the books in our database. 
Please look for other videos to see how to do update, delete, and to add a book. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.